So, hello everybody. And uh, I have a question for you all. Did you ever try to ask OpenAI to generate some text uh, for a for news portal or some story in English? I hope, I think that's for fun. But what about Euphania? If you ask to uh, OpenAI or ChatGPT about generating some text in Euphania, I think that it's going to be very efficient because they are not trained, most of them, on Euphania language. So, I'm data scientist from IBM Lithuania, and together with my team, with my colleagues, uh, we tried to experiment a little bit on Lithuanian text generation. Uh, so, in this presentation, in the next 25 minutes, uh, I will try to cover three distinct topics about text generation uh, in Lithuania, in, Lithu in Lithuanian language. The first one is a text, uh, a text to headline generation. If you have an article, how you can to generate a headline for that article. And uh, next, the next task is opposite. How, if you have a headline, how you can to generate text from that headline. For example, I don't know, we have election in Lithuania in the next couple of months. I need text about that. And uh, Lithuanian character resignation. Uh, it is quite a complex topic, and for this reason I will present a quick demo to make it clear for you all. So, here's my team, and uh, Argumentas Robert uh, and me, and uh, many people behind. We made a bunch of experiment about, and uh, researches and development, uh, which uh, delivered some results and uh, we faced some challenges to selecting the best models, best parameters to analyze the result and it was a big challenge how to evaluate the final results. So we will cover this later. Okay, uh, I want to begin from the very simple thing. It is transformers. Uh, you know you know all that transformers is like uh, decoder and the encoder architecture. Yeah, and there are many of selection which are gonna work and which not gonna work. And some of them are trained basically on English language, some not. Some trained on specific domains, some not. So it was a quite long uh, exploration work to select the best model. And uh, after several, after several attempts to choose the best one, we stick to MT5, and MT5 uh, is originally came from Hugging Face, and is supporting now more than 100 languages. So you can train your uh, tokenizer, and by passing your training set in most of languages. So it is mostly the coder on the transformer, transformer that we use. Probably you know that in attention. Uh, architecture, the coder is responsible for one thing, is to generating probabilities from softmax layer for next token generation. That's it. And that is the most important. So, um, I want to uh, cover some things about data collection. Uh, if you know, uh, maybe you guess that if you have such task in English, there's a many of sources. You can download corpus data, you can download, I don't know, some scrape data. And for the Finnish language, we scraped many articles from different uh, news portals. Uh, and we organize all of this uh, by some automatization behind. And in total, we collected uh, about more than 123,000 of unique articles with metadata with his lines. So what we did, uh, we truncated uh, all article text to 500 tokens, which is approximately 250 words. And maybe you can ask why this limitation happens. And uh, this limitation happens from the model limitation. And uh, as we made some experiment, this is a quite optimistic and quite promising number to 
which uh, contains meaningful context about article. It contains meaningful idea what the article is talking about. About his line, his line was not truncated, so because his line is much shorter. So we have trained uh, this data on Tesla 300 GPU, and in total we had uh, about 40 categories from news portal. All of these uh, categories contains many of articles with text and his lines without additional preprocessing. So we didn't make any additional preprocessing. Why? Because we want that our model will be able to handle the original text, not what not synthetical de text. It should be real life text from Lithuanian websites. So we had uh, another challenge. If you know that many portals has a categories, in, in new portals has cate categories, mm -hmm. and for example, if you compare politics, and for example, um, let's say uh, sport, there's a really different amount of articles. And for some technical reasons, we needed to balance the data. So in total, and for this use case that I will present in the next slides, we we selected uh, approximately 1,500 of unique articles. And uh, the full training process took about 1.5 and 2 weeks. It is not very fast, but anyway, uh, we waited and the result was quite good for 100% later. Um, one thing I need to cover, um, if you use uh, OpenAI, if you use ChatGPT or another LLMs, uh, you maybe know that there's different sampling techniques. Uh, we have greedy search, we have sampling, random sampling. Uh, after much of experimentation, we found that in this use case, especially in Lithuanian language, Beam search works the best. Who knows the beam search? Maybe. Okay, one. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, how is working? It's working a little bit different uh, from uh, gravity search and from random sampling. It's. Let's imagine the tree of uh, all possible selections, and. These selections contain some probabilities. And the beam search, you can set, the, for example, as you see in this slide, beam search equal to three. That means when you're selecting the best sequence of tokens, it's keep in mind three sequentially, uh, one by one going tokens, and find the best combinations. Um, as you can see, for example, uh, in this screenshot, uh, in the orange line, she's Atlas Patvirtina. It is a one uh, option how the text could be generated. But she's Evikis Bo has a higher probability in total. If we uh, consider three sequentially ordered tokens. So, for this reason, for this, let's say, short memory in sampling. Uh, makes beam search more robust in this use case. So I hope that was clear. If you have any question, you can ask afterwards and we can discuss. Um, so that was uh, some theory. Uh, I want to jump to the first use case. It's a text to headline generation. So if you have on one side text and on another side headline. And uh, so for this training, we use uh, 75 epochs, and number of tokens was 520 and uh, 12. And uh, as you can see here, some uh, outcomes from the result. If you have a text right here, you have a, no, sorry, it, it is a training set. How we define the training set? 
Yeah. Uh, on the left is a uh, original text from article, and on the right is a headline. Uh, so, and here's some results. Uh, on the left side in the green, you can see the actual headline. On the left, on the right side, it is predicted, generated, and uh, we tried to evaluate result by some classic techniques. Maybe you know blue roach, some other techniques. We try to use a roach, and for some cases roach is quite high. It's, for example, 75 percent. For some, it's about 40 percent. But let's look at the context. Uh, for example. Cape naturalist method is submerged in the Ruskosma, and the generated is Cape submerged in the Ruskosma. The context is the same. But we have some uh, about 10 or 50 percent, which logic is not the same, and it is a space for further improvement. So, uh, for this uh, training process, we trained. Uh, our unique uh, model is MT5 small LT. And uh, this model was fine tuned from MT5 small and based on our scrape data. And this slide showing one thing this slide showing the similar similarity distribution calculated from cosine similarity between actual heat line and um, generated uh, heat line. And our model, which we trained from MT5 small foundation, worked the best because similar similarity distribution is the highest. So, also we made experiment how our result depend on number of uh, epochs. And uh, and this effect, because the number of epochs result in uh, time duration for training and for final results. So 75 epochs was the best choice. Uh, if you compare these two uh, generated heat lines at the bottom, you can feel uh, the difference. So that's what we see in our experimentation for generation heat lines. So next thing, uh, if we have a heat line, we need to generate uh, text. For example, I am a journalist, uh, the election is coming, I need some quick te text about our president or, I don't know, some government. Putin, right now. I give a heat line, I need the text right now. So you can experiment with OpenAI. I am almost sure that our model will perform better. So, uh, it's the same, almost the same approach that we use for gener generating heat line, but we swapping what is the target and what is the sample. Because MT5 architecture let us to do this. So, input is heat line and output is article. So, and some uh, results from this task. Um, overall, uh, the gen generated text is fine, but you always need to double check the context and some logical mistakes, because uh, there's also additional space for improvement, but about 80 or 70% of full text is logical but some facts, names, surnames, government institutions, you need to double check them. Because uh, they directly took from the training set and sometimes it's got mistakenly to and put in not correct pl uh, places. But about 70 or 80% of text that is generated by MT5, Lithuanian model, works very good. And uh, the last part is Lefeuille character recognition. Um, 
let's imagine if you don't have a Lithuanian keyboard on your laptop. You need to write Lithuanian text, but you write it in English characters. For example, you cannot write dot above a if you need to write a, for example, letter. So this method is based on BERT and it able to recognize uh, Lithuanian characters in the text, or if the text don't have Lithuanian characters, it's able to recognize where they should be fixed. And uh, I think I can demonstrate in it in this demo. Uh, I'll try to open. Uh, somebody can, can anybody give me some random text which contains Lithuanian characters? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's try. I did the test before. Ir aš kitą dar turėsiu, kiek sūnų turi jūsų sūnus. Ok, let's wait for this one. Ok. Kitas variantas bus, kiek šūnų turi jūsų sūnus. I got it. Ok, that's the result, as you, as you may see. Šešas... No, we have another in the second floor. Okay. Oh, sorry. I made a mistake in the input. Oh, let's see. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so input text is as a size to say this. The city, the chair, radio set to the city. Okay, can you confirm that this work good or not? It's good? Oh. Okay. <laughs> the second one. Kiek sunu turi jūsų sūnus? Okay, right. If you have a kiek sunu turi jūsų sūnus. <laughs> okay. Suveikia. <laughs> One of your act correct uh, selection is delivery. <laughs> but input is the same. Yes. Yeah, and that is a bias. Yeah, that's a very good uh, example. Uh, okay. And the last thing, what you're going to show on the top of that, I think it's one of the critical parts. How much time you have? Uh, okay. When you're generating the text or you're working on generative AI uh, overall, uh, it is not easy task to evaluate your performance. If you have supervised learning and supervised, you have some classical approach. And uh, for generative AI and text, you're going to use a roach or blue, as I mentioned before. But it, it's, it is working fine with English. Uh, with English uh, corpus. For Lithuania, uh, we made many ex ex experiment. How, what is the best way to evalu evaluate our text? And uh, if we have a roach, for example, it delivers some indicators if our generated headlines is good or not. But sometimes, if we change only one word, in the predicted heat light, which 
dramatically change the entire context. Roach still will be high, and this is not good. So I think it will be a topic for another conference. Uh, we worked on unique hybrid evaluation system to uh, evaluate the performance of generation text in Lithuanian language. That's the idea for the next conference, and thank you for listening. I hope that was interesting. Yeah. Um, so the person is saying that maybe they missed it, but then why was MT5 chosen as the base model? Uh, because MT5 uh, uh, from Hacking Face supports in language, and uh, it was a good start for uh, trying to based on our uh, training data set. Okay, great. Um, another question. Was the Lithuanian language model before the Hacking Face we need to discuss with the team. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Uh, just a couple of suggestions. So first of all, uh, that uh, would be great if you make it open source so we can all kind of contribute. And second uh, thought is uh, that uh, AI Lithuania uh, has uh, research already on this uh, uh, made. Uh, so we collect the data from uh, Liepa and uh, yeah. we collect the data from the uh, uh, dictionaries. So we could uh, feed the model with this and put uh, your contribution uh, with the articles that you extracted. Yeah, yeah, I know that. I know that. Just uh, one note on that. This is like, it was like an internal initiative between uh, our colleagues. And uh, it, is, it was done in our free time. And uh, we didn't expect such a success in this. So, but that you mentioned, I think that is one of uh, possible solutions how we can to grow. Choosing the right article sets. We know there can be like bad grammar, uh, articles with bad grammar. Yeah, uh, so what is used from M25 provides the best results, not our base models. Uh, because as you check the MT5, uh, which language is supporting as a base, it's about 100 of language, and our languages are also difficult. So that's, there was just a few suitable models, base models that we was able to select. So that's it. And yeah, and how we selected the correct articles for training, we didn't make any filters. Just we push random all articles. Only one filter, maybe the article should be longer than 250 words. Because we want to, we wanted to create as much robust model as possible, so we didn't make any filter input in data, in shaping data, data frame. Any more questions? Okay, so maybe you found some biases, like interesting kind of biases in the model. So we found one biases today. With <laughs> <laughs> Spoke about indexes there that choose uh, the more relevant index for the next word. Yeah. But how it uh, makes this index? Uh, the index is made by tokenizer. Yeah. Right. But uh, how it understands for each word what more relevant? Uh, personally, me, I experiment with training unique tokenizer. You can do it with BERT. If you have a corpus of your data, uh, you can drain your own tokenizer in bare tools that could be used. Your unique bare tokenizer. For example, if you, when you train the, mod, train the model, instead of selecting a base tokenizer, you can use your own tokenizer. Okay, so um, someone is asking, will the model be published on Hugging Face or somewhere? Uh, sorry. Will the model be published on Hagen phase? Uh, as, as I mentioned, we need to discuss and before this step and to, pay, to make some modification, I guess, and improvements before publishing. Any more questions? 
Um, thank you very much for your presentation. May I ask you please how you considered uh, working with, with this particular model on some classic natural language processing tasks? For example, sentiment analysis or aspect-based sentiment analysis. Yes. Have you tried extracting some entities from texts using the Yes, uh -huh. How, we, oh, we tried. Uh -huh. uh, it is was not so successful as mm -hmm. for text generation mm -hmm. and we worked so much on this but uh, we didn't inc include it in this presentation mm -hmm. but we tried mm -hmm. and that's the idea for uh, future work mm -hmm. yeah. because we have, we, have, we have much of the data mm -hmm. really much mm -hmm. and we have a big space to do very different tasks on this so mm -hmm. that's the one of the key points what we have to do mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.